Dynasty Warriors is a series that I really enjoy. It gets a lot of flack critically, some of which is deserved, but the end result is that there aren't really a whole lot of video reviews of Dynasty Warriors games on YouTube. I'm looking to fix that by taking a look back at the Dynasty Warriors series, starting with the first game, Dynasty Warriors 2. That was only kind of a joke. Dynasty Warriors 1 really isn't part of the series proper, at least how Japan sees it. It was originally released in Japan as Sangoku Muso. It was a one-on-one -on -one fighting game with heavy emphasis on weapon combat. The sequel was known as Shin Sangoku Muso and turned the game into a beat-em-up style game that we know and love today. This got localized as Dynasty Warriors 2, keeping the same naming convention as the game before it, unlike Japanese nomenclature. This discrepancy in numbers still holds true today, with the newest western release of Dynasty Warriors 9 actually being known as Dynasty Warriors 8 back in Japan. With that out of the way, how is Dynasty Warriors 2 itself? Let's take a look. The time for change is upon us! The time of the Blue Dragon is over! Let all who believe wear my symbol upon their heads! Let them fight by my side! Dynasty Warriors 2 was released on October 26, 2000 in North America. Do you notice anything about that date? That's right, it's the same day that the PS2 came out, which I think is important to mention. In many ways, Dynasty Warriors 2 feels far more like a tech demo than an actual game, but I'll go into that later. The game is loosely based on the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which is a 14th century Chinese novel loosely based on the Three Kingdoms era of Chinese history, which is roughly 200 AD. Many future games in the series break down the campaign into three kingdoms, but the way things are structured here in Dynasty Warriors 2 is a bit more arcadey. When you first boot up the game, you're given two gameplay options, Muso and Free Play. Free Play is pretty self-explanatory. You just pick your character and level and go at it. Muso is structured not unlike a fighting game, where you pick whatever warrior you want at the beginning and then go through a set of levels. Most of the levels get reused across other characters, so if you choose to do Muso for everyone, you'll be seeing a lot of the same content. There are 9 warriors that you start with, but you can unlock up to 28 by beating the Muso mode, meeting different conditions. Whether you have the patience to do that is a different story. The core Dynasty Warriors formula is actually here. Once you're in a level, you walk around and beat up entire armies of dudes by yourself. You have light attacks and heavy attacks. You can chain them together, but your heavy attacks always end your combo. They're pretty flashy and well animated, especially considering that this game came out in 2000. There are some other auxiliary moves at your disposal too, like the ability to fire arrows and engage in horseback combat. Both of these feel like pretty obvious last minute additions, so I ignored the ranged combat altogether and used horseback exclusively for travel. You also have the option to use a Musou attack. The namesake of the series is a powerful attack that can only be used after saving enough energy and will be a devastating whirlwind of attacks that varies depending on the character that you're playing as. Each level that you play in is a relatively large map that contains allied and enemy forces. As you beat back the enemy forces, the morale of your troops increases, which can create a snowball effect. In theory, you could stick to the front lines near the rest of your allies and help them beat back waves of enemies, but let's be real, we all know this game is about going Rambo. Instead, most of my gameplay was me running headfirst towards enemy generals. Out of the hordes of unranked plebs you fight through, you will occasionally encounter a named enemy. Killing them may cause something to happen on the map, such as a gate opening up. Their corpses will also leave behind a permanent stat bonus to give some progression to your character. The decision to have a permanently incrementing kill counter on the bottom right of your screen was a pretty inspired choice too, and a perfect summation of the power trip that this game puts you on. You are designed to take on tons and tons of dudes at a time, regardless of what fighter you play as, all of your attacks are wide and sweeping, cleaving tons of dudes in the process omnidirectionally. I think the last few paragraphs of this review could have described basically every single Dynasty Warriors game ever made. But despite that fact, even though I love this series, I just don't like Dynasty Warriors 2. The core gameplay is almost as good as future installments, but I guess it just goes to show how little gameplay really means when everything around it is super bare bones. It starts with the menu. I mean, look at this menu. It doesn't even feel like an inspired artistic choice. It's just kind of there. The cutscenes that play before levels are about 15 seconds of poorly acted and poorly animated exposition that doesn't do nearly enough to give you context of what's going on. If you aren't already familiar with the romance of the Three Kingdoms, you'll be incredibly lost. 
even if you're a longtime fan of the series who is not lost, there really isn't a whole lot of substance to extract from them. Much like the levels that these cutscenes proceed, they're super disjointed and unfulfilling and almost always end oddly abruptly. Any time now. There are some pretty frustrating design decisions too. Even after the hours I put into this game for review purposes, I could not figure out what caused enemy generals to randomly heal while I was fighting them. By the time I had them dead for good, it felt like I had probably killed them four to five times over. There is no camera movement option with the right analog stick, instead you must rely solely on using the block button to recenter the camera behind your character. The presentation doesn't fare any better either. Even by PS2 standards, the game is incredibly blocky. The view distance feels like it's a few feet in front of you, all of your surroundings look samey, and despite all of that, the game still has frame rate drops if there's weather effects going on. Running into an enemy general in the field gives them a little introduction cinematic, but these cinematics are the exact same for every single character and are unvoiced. It was so jarring the first time I encountered it, I thought my disc was scratched and I lost sound or something. and the level design is just so bland, both visually and design-wise. I'm serious when I'm saying almost every level in this game looks and feels exactly the same. It makes it tough to care, even if the moment-to-moment -moment of actually pounding on dudes isn't all that bad for a near 20-year-old game. But the largest saving grace of the presentation is the music. Ugh, the music. One of the things that made me fall in love with the series so much. Marrying rock music to such an unexpected part of human history gives Dynasty Warriors such a unique feel. The only knock against the score here is that the instrument choice is pretty conventional and doesn't complement the score with traditional Chinese staples like many future games do. The other boon in the presentation is the amount of guys on screen at any given time. It's nothing short of impressive, especially given the added consideration that they all have logic. Even in areas that you aren't currently in on the map, generals will be fighting. It definitely feels like there's a battle going on around you. I think fitting the most amount of enemies possible on screen was the muse that inspired this game. Somebody wanted to make the infant hardware of the PS2 look good by showing just how many dudes they could process on screen, and they relentlessly pursued that goal at the cost of literally everything else. Dynasty Warriors 2 is really only worth playing if you want to see how the series began, because its sequels have improved on the formula in literally every single way.